So we are moving to the next presentation to Seichiro Abi from the National Cancer Center in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, Seichiro is an endoscopist and he specialized in early cancer, early gastric cancer, and he's going to show his experience. Seichiro. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. My task today is endoscopic resection of early bowel cancer from Asian perspective. I'm an Asian endoscopist. Uh, first of all, let me a little bit talk about so, some differences in risk and treatment strategy of early bowel cancer or neoplasm between East and West. And first, long segment bowel esophagus, which is well known risk factor of bowel esophageal cancer, is rarely seen in Japan and other Asian countries. In contrast, majority of patients with esophageal adenal health, LSBE, in the West. The second difference is the treatment strategy. Uh, in the West, um, EMR for visible lesion followed by radio frequency ablation is the standard of care. On the other hand, RFA is not commercially available. It's not approved in Japan. Instead, we do have a special resection technique, an ESD, which allows us to perform an unbroken RZ resection regardless of region size and location. I'm going to show you the representative case how we perform the managed advanced endoscopic resection technique in Japan. A 77 years old male underwent two sessions of EMR for esophageal adenocarcinoma in the very esophagus. Uh, both our EMR specimens are uh, indicated intramucosal adenocarcinoma with positive uh, lateral margin. The surveillance easily found the two elevated lesions on the post EMR score. The biopsy revealed well differentiated adenocarcinoma. The patient opted for endoscopic resection and he was referred to our endoscopy center. At first, uh, we performed a high definition white red endoscopy as uh, Professor Shalmo recommended. It shows the two elevated lesions on the very esophagus, C2 and 5. And the post EMR scars were covered with and replaced to the non neoplastic squamous epithelium. And NBI magnified endoscopy shows the two more demarcation lines uh, like this. Uh, however, um, it is very much challenging to precisely uh, diagnose and delineate the lateral extension of the esophageal neoplasm in the very esophagus even by the expert hand. So but just in case we took a negative biopsy from outside the lesion, it is not random biopsy, but targeted negative biopsy to make sure the lateral extension. So, and all uh, biopsy specimens revealed negative for cancer. So later, uh, we decided to uh, perform extensive ESD and mark around the region as shown in this slide. I'm going to show you the video. A mucosal incision was performed using the dual knife J, outside marking. And then uh, the following procedure is submucosal dissection. Uh, we normally use uh, IT knife nano for submucosal dissection. Uh, we test the submucosal layer uh, parallel to muscle layer. And after the second fascia mucosal incision and the trimming of the edge of the submucosal dissection frame, the lesion sifted distally, which makes the following procedure more difficult. Thus, we use clip line traction technique. A line was tied to the end clip outside the patient, and the clip line was introduced and deployed to the backside of the specimen. When the line will pull through the mouth, approximately, Yes, our uh, submucosal layer was well lifted up uh, with good traction. Uh, this procedure allows us to perform an easy and fast submucosal dissection. So uh, we can uh, make sure the muscle direction and easily perform the submucosal dissection. And also then we are uh, able to uh, maintain the satisfactory traction until the end of the procedure. And as expected, and here you see the submucosal fibrosis owing to prior EMR attempt. But well, we are able to dissect the fibrosis by using the IT neck nano device, a parallel to muscle layer. In this case, unfortunately, the submucosal fibrosis was not so severe. 
so that we could dissect underneath the fibrotic tissue. And finally, an unblock resection was achieved. And as you can see, uh, the semi-circumferential uh, extensive mucosal defect involving the more than 90% uh, of the luminal circumference. A minor muscle injury is covered by endoclips, no problem. After that, uh, for the prevention of the post ec stricture, we performed a local tramcinolone injection. As you can see, tramcinolone acetonide was injected on the mucosal defects using the injection needle and multiple uh, submucosal blep were created after injection. And the procedure time was one and a half hour, uh, including the injection. And the specimen was uh, 65 by 50 millimeter in size. And the resected specimen reveals a well differentiated tubular adenocarcinoma uh, with the deepest inversion to laminar proprio without a lymph vascular invasion. Margin negative measuring the 18 millimeter by 11 millimeter uh, for both two regions. The lower right image shows the submucosal fibrosis due to prior EMR attempt where I dissected with IT nano. And in addition to one 50 milligram of local transgenome injection immediately after ESD, to prevent post ESD stricture, the patient took oral prednisone 40 milligram per day, tapering down in eight weeks. Unfortunately, the patient has been asymptomatic and four up and desk beep and eight weeks after ESD reveals no severe stricture at all. And a standard gastroscope could easily pass through this tree and no endoscopy balloon dilatation was required. The mucosal defect was mostly replaced with a non plastic absquamax epsilon. It is good for uh, endoscopists. Now here you see the result of our multicenter retrospective study from Japan. We compare the treatment outcomes between EMR and ESD, and unblock resection rate and R0 resection rate were 99% and 88% respectively. Uh, they were uh, significantly higher uh, in the ESD group uh, than the EMR group. And in this study, the local recurrence was defined as a lesion located at the same portion of EMR's curve. And as expected, a five-year cumulative instance of local recurrence was statistically higher in the EMR group. In the ESD groups, the local recurrence rate was only 0.5%. And it is interesting that the uh, metachron's recurrence, uh, which is defined as a lesion located at a different portion of the post-ESD resection curve, is unlikely to occur in Japan. The five-year cumulative incense of metachron's recurrence, me metachron's neoplasm is only 1.1%. In contrast, in the West, 14% of the patient undergoing endoscopic mucosal resection develops metachron's recurrence, uh, which requires a close follow-up, I, I suppose. Uh, the rare metachron's recurrence in Japan could be explained by some reason. First, there is significant difference in length of barrett esophagus between east and west. As I presented in the introduction, the LSPE is uncommon in Asian countries, but it is commonly seen in daily clinical practice in the west. Thus, the background barrett uh, esophagus is different among countries. Accordingly, the risk of metachron's recurrence is supposed to be lower in Japan. The second reason is high unbroken R0 resection rate of ESD in Japan. Well, we rarely experience local recurrence after ESD, as the definitions of metachron's recurrence are different among literature. I think that some recurrence would develop after incomplete EMR or a piecemeal EMR, it, which could be uh, regarded and could uh, count it as a metachron's recurrence in the West. Of course, I'd like to note that many local recurrence could be eradicated and eliminated by RFA in the West. And third, advantage of ESD is that we are able to obtain the su su sufficient resection margin as we want. 
The lateral margin of the esophageal high-grade dysplasia and adenocarcinoma is often indistinct. So we are likely put the marking with wide margin around the region, and the background of high-risk mucosa is more likely to be eradicated by ESD involving sufficient lateral margin. I suppose the esophageal ESD is still to be technically challenging in the West and many Western endoscopists concerned about perforation. However, now we Japanese endoscopy have two uh, game changers. Our first tip and tricks is clip line traction as shown in the video. Then we apply the clip line traction uh, to, to the ESD specimen. We can invariably obtain satisfactory traction until the end of the procedure. Uh, one randomized control trial from Japan demonstrated that the ESD procedure time was significantly shorter in the traction-assisted ESD compared with the conventional ESD. More importantly, the perforation rate in the traction-assisted ESD group was 0%. What I want to say is the clip line traction is beneficial to reduce the risk of uh, intraoperative perforation as thanks to the better exposure of the subnormal cause of dissection plane. The current Japanese ESD guideline recommend to use it as a standard of care. Also, the many Western endoscopists concerned about the post resection stricture after extensive ESD, which could develop after extensive piecemeal EMR as well. But no worry. So currently, the steroid therapy is commonly performed for the prevention of the post ESD stricture. The several studies from Japan demonstrated that the preventive effect of steroid therapy for high-risk patients who had extensive mucosal defect more than three quarters, 70% uh, of the luminal circumference. As you can see, the both a local injection and oral prednisone were reported to be effective to reduce post es restriction and reduce the number of the required endoscopic pattern dilatation. Uh, in conclusion, an EST for local recurrence is a reasonable and effective treatment in Japan. And clip line traction and prophylactic steroid treatment are game changers of extensive EST for varied esophageal cancer. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Very interesting and a nice presentation. Right now, I understand there is no RFA, right, available in Japan. Um, we have a couple of questions. Can you can you see these questions, uh, Seichiro, on your screen? So the first question is from uh, Ahmed Elsar, and he's asking uh, what size, what is the limit of the size that you can do by ESR? Ah, uh, yes. So the, I think the, but that really depends on the uh, technique, the scale of the endoscopies. My my uh, largest size is ten centimeter in length. But over 10 centimeter, I think the but severe stricture occurred, uh, which I couldn't manage endoscopically. And can you say something about the depth of invasion? Do you also do T1B lesions? Um, in Japan, never. Never. Because, my, my, yes, of course, my, so it, because uh, esophagectomy is a standard of care for the invasive cancer. Okay. And also the mortality rate is uh, much, much less uh, compared with the uh, Western countries. Because there, you know that there are trials going on trying to do T1B. We will hear more about that later. Uh, I just want to stay in, in, in time. Do we have still some time for some of these questions live? I, I have to remind everybody that all these questions will be addressed uh, through our Facebook page, the ISD Facebook page. So if you are not able to address your question now, you'll get an answer later. Uh, so maybe we can do one more um we had uh, well i think the question of jimmy so since there's no rfa because that's also what i was wondering how do you deal with the high grade dysplasia with no visible lesion the flat dysplasia uh yes so the it is a problem even in japan but uh, in japan we believe that we can identify the very flat lesion because uh, uh, we prevalence of the gastric cancer is very high in Japan. So the, uh, we get used to the screen the entire stomach and the esophagus. But we are really good at uh, identifying the very flat lesion during gastric cancer screening. Okay. 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 Great, uh, Seichiro. So if you wouldn't mind going to the uh, Q and A and answer two questions online, it's about training about ESD. 
I'm sure people would love to train with you and all these beautiful yes. techniques you have. So thank you very much.